Recently, one of our viewers, Michelangelo Casanova, left a message complaining, John, you haven't really talked about the first to file system. And I was sure that in 150 videos in, I'd already talked about this in some detail, but I couldn't find the video. So today we're gonna to talk about the first to file system, everything you wanted to know. Hey, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. For most of the history of our patent system, up until the year 2013, the United States was a first to invent system rather than a first to file system. Now, first to invent meant that whichever inventor was the first to reduce the invention to practice, either through building a model or writing down the details of the invention, for example, in a lab notebook, the first to invent would get credit for the invention, would get priority for the invention, so that any invention that came along later would be subordinate or secondary to the first invention reduced to practice. Now, a major reason for this first to invent system was the fact that the United States was so large, it was difficult for inventors in other parts of the country to actually get their patent filing to Washington, D.C. in a timely manner. And Congress didn't want to disadvantage or prejudice inventors living in the frontiers of the United States in places like Missouri or Kansas just because they didn't have easy access to Washington, D.C. or the Patent Office. So prior to 2013, so long as you were using good efforts to get your patent application on file after invention, the important date, the priority date, was the date of reduction to practice. That is, building a model or writing down your invention in a lab notebook or filing a patent application. Now, one of the problems with the first to invent system was that there were often disputes as to who the first true inventor was. Who invented first often depended on the detail or the explanation that someone put into their lab notebook or to the details that were embodied in a model of the invention, for example. These fights over priority of who invented first were called interference proceedings and were expensive and often took a long time in the patent office. Another problem with the first to invent system was that the United States was the only country in the world that had a first to invent system. All other countries of the world use a first to file system. And this created a complex harmonization problem as we tried to synchronize the United States patent system with the patent systems in other countries. So for these reasons and others, the United States Congress changed the patent system and beginning in 2013, 13, the United States adopted the first to file system as opposed to the first to invent system. The first to file system means the first inventor to file their patent application, either a provisional application or a non-provisional application in the United States Patent Office, gets awarded priority for the invention. Sometimes this is called a race to the patent office. Now beyond the scope of this video, I want to emphasize that it is possible to get the equivalent of the filing of a patent in the United States by first filing a patent in certain foreign countries under 35 U.S.C. 119. When you file a patent application in countries having reciprocal rights or treaties with the United States, it is possible to get priority in the United States by filing in those countries first. So this first to file system can create some interesting tensions. We want to file our patent applications quickly, but the inventions need to be ready for filing. There was a long and sorted dispute in the patent office involving Elisha Gray and Alexander Graham Bell back in 1876, when both inventors filed patent applications for the invention of the telephone on the same morning, Valentine's morning of 1876. Apparently, the patent attorney for Elisha Gray filed Gray's patent application early in the morning of February 14th, while Alexander Bell's attorney filed Bell's application right before lunch on the same morning. 
Alexander Bell's attorney was apparently a little more aggressive when he filed Bell's patent, as he insisted that he get a receipt for the payment of the filing fee, and also that the patent application be immediately hand-delivered to the patent examiner while he waited. As a result, Elisha Gray's application was stuck at the bottom of the inbox and didn't actually get processed by the patent office until the afternoon of February 14th. Overall, this was a super crazy story involving conspiracy, bribery, and apparently even a drunken patent examiner. Eventually, the patent interference case went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and as we all know, Alexander Bell was granted the patent, and the rest is history. Now, a valuable tool that inventors have to get their patent applications on file quickly is the provisional patent application. And although it's important that the provisional patent application have the sufficient detail to demonstrate and explain the invention, provisional patent applications benefit from the fact that the formality requirements are very loose. You can file a provisional application very informally and very quickly. And so if you are worried about getting your invention protected quickly, the provisional patent application might be a good way to do this. Okay, that's all I have to say today about the first to file system and the race to the patent office. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And if you need help with your company's patent portfolio or your race to the patent office, drop me an email message. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.